Hello, hi everyone. Uh, today we'll check uh, Sahil's video How to build a SIP grade portfolio from scratch 9 key themes with the top stop ideas Let's jump to the video In one of the interview, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos quoted that 21st century is going to be Indian century In another interview, McKinsey CEO Bob Sternfeld mentioned that It is not just India's decade but India's century In fact, these are just a couple of examples if you do a simple Google search, you'll find that almost every major investment firm of the world is bullish on Indian growth story. And when the Indian economy would grow, the stock markets are bound to do well. Now if you look at Nifty journey in the last 25 years, it has zoomed from below 1000 levels to currently at more than 22,000. That's nearly 24 times growth in the last 25 years. Just take a second to digest this. The craziest part is that 24 times return in the last 25 years does not require your wealth to double every year. If you can fetch just 13.5% CGR return, then your wealth can grow 24 times in 25 years. And considering the potential in the economy, I expect similar 20-25 times return in the next 25 years. It means there is still a long runway for wealth creation. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. The popularity of stock investment has grown multiple times since COVID. Thanks to huge return generated by stock market, increasing awareness about investment and ease of investment with quick account opening and great mobile apps to invest with a few clicks. Hence, every year many new people try their luck in stock market. So I thought of doing a quick video on how you can build a long-term portfolio that can help you create wealth in the next 10-20 years. So if you're looking for tips to make quick money in no time, then please skip this video. My channel is only for long-term investors who want to invest in fundamentally strong companies for long-term wealth creation. The idea behind this video is not to give tips. The idea is to give you right direction in building a good long-term portfolio. But at the end of the day, you need to do your research and invest with conviction. Because if you invest simply on the basis of tips, you will panic even with 10-20% correction. And please note that corrections are part of an investment journey. Stock market can create huge wealth, but it is volatile. In fact, if you look at Nifty movement, there have been many instances where Nifty has corrected 10-20-30-40%. But the long-term trajectory is always towards upward direction. So in this video, we'll discuss how to build a long-term stock portfolio from scratch by identifying key themes and stocks within each theme where you can consider investing in a systematic manner. All right, let's get started. First of all, you need to understand the macro picture of the economy. Why is the Indian stock market going up? And why it can grow another 20, 25 times in the next 25 years? So the simple reason is stock market is linked to the economy. And India is the fastest growing economy in the world because of demographic dividend. We are a country with more than 140 crore people where nearly 65% population is below age of 35 and 50% population is below the age of 25. It basically means we are one of the youngest country in the world and every year new people are joining the workforce. Moreover, with more than 140 crore people, we are one of the world's largest consumption market. On top of this, Indian government is focusing on building the infrastructure of our country, improving the manufacturing sector, and there is huge digital transformation happening in the country. And of course, global MNCs want to reduce their dependence on China, and India has emerged as a strong alternative. So all these factors combined together have created a great platform for future growth. Now the question is, how to start building a long-term portfolio? So first step is to understand your risk appetite, because that would help you bifurcate your investment across large cap, mid cap and small cap. Now the problem is that today majority of young investors or new investors only want to invest in mid and small cap because they find large cap boring. Moreover, small and mid cap stocks have rallied a lot in last one year and especially post COVID and hence new investors want to have higher exposure in large in small and mid cap. While there's nothing wrong with investing in fundamentally strong mid and small cap companies, but please note that mid and small cap companies are very volatile. So today everything might look great, but there have been cases in the past where mid cap and small cap have corrected 40-50%. Large cap also correct, but they don't correct that sharply. And that's where I always say that you need to build a good portfolio across large mid and small cap. Especially in the world of stock market, if you're new, then my honest suggestion would be to have higher exposure in large cap as high as 70-80%. And as you gain experience in the market, as you gain knowledge, you can increase your exposure in mid and small cap, okay? See, it's very easy for me to suggest mid and small cap and even micro cap stock. But building a long-term portfolio is not about only returns. It's about balancing your risk versus return. 
Moreover, to generate 20, 25 times return in 25 years, you need just 13, 14% CGR return. And that can be easily generated by investing in fundamentally strong large cap companies. You don't necessarily need to take the risk of investing in mid and small. Having said this, if you have risk appetite, you can even consider say 50% in large and 50% in mid and small. Especially today, if you ask me, I find large caps much better placed in terms of valuation as compared to mid and small cap. So the first step is to identify your risk appetite and decide what percentage allocation you want across large, mid and small. And as I said, if you are a new investor, it's better to have higher exposure in large cap and then slowly increase exposure in mid and small cap. Now the next question is how to identify the right stock to build a long term portfolio. So within that, the first step is to identify the key themes and trends for the next 10, 20 years. Then step two is to identify key sectors that would benefit from those themes. Step three, you need to identify leading players in the sector. And once you have a list of say 200, 300 odd stock, you need to deep dive into the fundamentals and valuation to identify say 20, 25 stocks for your portfolio. And of course, you need to track their performance. Now, what are some of the biggest themes and trends for the next 10, 20 years? So I have identified nine key themes and shortlisted about 150, 200 odd stocks across the universe of nearly 4,000 plus listed entities. Let's have a look. So one of the biggest theme is electric vehicle. 21st century is all about electric vehicle. Now interestingly, there's an entire value chain around electric vehicle. You have auto OEMs that caters to two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler. Then within four wheeler, you have passenger cars, commercial vehicle. Then you have a long list of auto auxiliary companies that provide various components to these auto OEMs. Not only that, there are digital companies working on software side of these EV companies because these 21st century cars are essentially software on wheels. Then you have companies working on EV chargers and electricity production. So what are some of the top names in EV segment? Well, in auto OEM side, you have Tata Motors that has a lion's share in Indian four-wheeler passenger EV market. And the best part is, it's part of India's most prestigious Tata group. Please note that due to lack of time, I can't discuss the details here, but I would strongly recommend you doing your research before investing. Then you have Mahindra & Mahindra, Marutu Suzuki, Ashok Leland as leading player in this space. But I have to pick one, then I would pick Tata Motors. Then in Indian two-wheeler auto sector, you have companies like Aisha Motor, Bajaj Auto, Hero Moto. Then auto auxiliary is a great theme, where Indian auto auxiliary companies are not only supplying parts to Indian OEMs, but also to global OEMs. For example, you have Samvardhana Madhasan Sumi, Madhasan Sumi Wiring India, Sona BLW, Precall, Sansera Engineering, then Craftsman Automation, Endurance Technology, Unominda, Balkrishna Industry. And in this space, some companies still have higher exposure in traditional car, and some are more inclined towards EV car. For example, Sona BLW is a leading auto auxiliary company in EV segment. So you can pick one or two names from this auto auxiliary space. I've covered majority of these companies in detail in the past. And many of them rallied recently. Having said this, the idea is to help you identify stocks for systematic investment for the long term. Now, there is one specific theme within EV segment that I like the most. It's EV software theme. It includes stocks like KPIT, Tata Alexi, LNT Technology, and Tata Technologies. By the way, KPIT and Tata Alexi have already generated multiple returns from my previous discussion. And today, the valuation of all these companies are on higher side. But I still think that there's a long runway from here and worth doing SIP in these stocks. You can pick any one or two names uh, after your research. Then in case you want to identify which stocks I hold in my own portfolio, you can explore my weekly video series where I post one exclusive video every week, including stocks I am buying in my portfolio. Again, it's not a buy or sell call. The idea is to share my conviction with you all. And I also discuss a lot of other stock market related updates and potential ideas in detail. In case you are interested, I've provided the details of my website in the pinned comment. Now, next theme I really like is digitization. India is a global leader in IT and software. And these companies have created humongous wealth in the last few decades. The best part is, we are global leader in the segment. And needless to say, future is digital. So here you have multiple names like TCS, Infosys, HCL, Wipro, LNT, Mindtree in the large cap category. Then you can pick any either of them. My preferred pick would be HCL and Infosys. Then you have many promising companies in mid and small cap segment, including Persistent System, CoForge, Emphasis, Billa Soft, Sonata Software, Scient, then Intellect Design, Happiest Mind, Zensar, Nugent Software, R System, Latent View. Now, if you ask me to pick one or two names, it's very difficult because they are all equally promising. 
For instance, I made four times return so far in Nugent Software. But again, majority of these companies have generated great return for the investors and have the potential to grow more in the future. Then I also like stocks that are working on digital technologies. They are not IT companies, but tech oriented companies. The best part of these tech companies is asset light model. As a result, they generate high cash flow. For example, you have Apple India, NetWeb Technologies, MapMy India, Tata Communication, Tanla Platform, India Mart, InfoEdge. By the way, I've already discussed majority of these companies in detail. Then recently I covered a microcap company, Traxon Technology. So you can pick one or two names from this theme. Third important theme is finance and investment. And it includes sectors like banks, NBFC and wealth management firm. I always say that banks are the backbone of the economy. If India has to grow, banks would play a key role. Here you have plethora of options. For example, in banking sector, you have ICICI Bank, SDFC Bank, Kotak, Axis Bank in large cap private sector, then SBI in large cap public sector, then mid cap banks include Federal Bank, IDFC First, Karur Vasya, South Indian Bank, Karnataka Bank, RBL. Then you have small finance bank that include Equita Small Finance, Ujivan Small Finance, Utkar Small Finance. You also have many public banks like Union Bank of India, Canara Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India. So you can pick one from large, then one from mid and one from small finance. The best part is today banking sector has the most reasonable valuation. Although at the moment PSU banks are in uptrend, but for long term, I would still like to prefer private banks. Next, you have NBFC that include companies across your consumer lending, vehicle finance, home finance, microfinance. And again, I've done detailed video on NBFC sector. It includes players like Bajaj Finance, Sriram Finance, Chola Mandalam, LNT Finance. Then affordable housing finance include Avas, Home First, Canfin Homes, Aptus Value Housing. Then microfinance sector include Credit Access Grameen, Satin Credit Care, Fusion Microfinance and Arman Financials. Recently, Geo Financials has also entered into this segment. So you can pick one or two stock from NBFC segment. Personally, I find this space very promising. Then third subcategory in finance in, uh, theme is investment related stocks that include CAMS, CDSL, then multiple AMCs like SDFC AMC, Nippon AMC, then wealth management firms like Nuwama Wealth Management, Angel One, Anand Rathi. Again, worth considering one or two stocks from this theme. Then fourth theme is consumption. We are a country with more than 140 crore people with rising income and spending level. So consumption is a huge trend. Especially premiumization is a much bigger trend within consumption. That's where you have companies like Titan, Trent, Dmart, Kalyan Dweller, Sanko Gold in retail sector. Then FMCG include HUL, ITC, Varun Beverage, Nestle, Dabur, Britannia, then Mrs. Bector Food, Marico and so on. Then you have QSR chains like Deviani International, Jubilant Food, Sapphire Food, Westlife Food. Then recently Zomato has created a lot of buzz. Likewise, you have Nika and New Age companies. Another category in consumption is alcohol that include United Spirit, Radico Khetan, Sula Wine, Global Spirit. Next sector is consumer durable that include TTK Prestige, Whirlpool, Bajaj Electrical, Orient Electric as top players. So you can pick two, three names from this consumption theme. So far, we've covered four important themes. EV, digitization, finance, and consumption. I think these are the four best themes to have major percentage of your portfolio allocation. The sectors and stock within these themes have been wealth creator in the past and would continue to do so. Having said this, there are many other themes where you have high growth potential. So fifth theme is China plus one and make in India. Globally, MNCs are trying to reduce their dependence on China and India has emerged as a strong alternative. Moreover, Indian government is incentivizing domestic players. So you have multiple sectors to benefit from this theme. First is defense. It includes names like Hindustan Aeronautics, Bharat Electronics, Bharat Dynamics, Data Pattern, DCX, then your Paris Defense, Idea Force Technology. The next sector is chemical that again has a long list of companies like Army Organics, Deepak Nitrite, SRF, Naveen Florine, Gujarat Fluorochemical, Clean Science, RT Industry, Rosari Biotech, Fine Organics, then Galaxy Surfactant, Tata Chemical, Yasho Industry, Phenotex Chemical, Lakshmi Organics, Vinati Organics, Alkyl Amine, Balaji Amine. Then you have agrochemical stocks, including your PI Industry, Sumitomo Chemical, Coromander International, Dhanuka Agritech, and Anupam Rasayan. Then third sector is electronics manufacturing, that include Dixon, Keynes, Avalon, Sirma SGS, Ember Enterprise, and Sign DLM. Then fourth sector is capital goods, that include Bharat Forge, Paraj Industry, ABB India, Thermex. 
Then fifth sector within this particular theme is textile. Now textile include domestic players like page industry, dollar industry, rupa, lux. Then exporters include Gokuldas Export, KPR Mill, Indocount Industry and Trident. You can pick one or two stock from each category. Then sixth theme is infrastructure. For Indian economy to grow, infrastructure would play a crucial role and that's where Indian government has a lot of focus. So first name in this list is LNT, the largest player in Indian infra space. Then you have Reliance Industry with Geo. Next is Airtel. Then one promising sector in infra theme is wires and cable that include polycap, KEI industry, RR cable. Another promising theme in infrastructure today is railway where I like IRCTC. Then you have IRFC but it has rallied a lot. Then you have logistics sector with stocks like your Adani port, JSW infra, Al Cargo logistics, TVS supply chain, Gateway district park, VRL logistics, Aegis logistics, Mahindra logistics, container corporation and snowman logistics. Then you have entire building material stocks, for example, piping include your Estral, Supreme, Prince Pipe, Apollo Pipe, Prakash Pipe. Next is Structural Steel Tube, where you have APL Apollo, JTL Industry, Hariom Pipe, Venus Pipe. Then you have Serra Sanitary Wear, Kajaria Ceramic, Century Ply, Green Ply, Green Panel. Then real estate is an upcycle that include DLF, Godrej Property, Prestige State, Soba, Capacite Infra, PNC Infra. So you can consider one or two names from this list. Then seventh theme is renewable energy. Now the catch is that it is a capital intensive business and has lower profitability. So I like to go with top players in this space like Tata Power, NTPC, Power Grid. Today many companies in this space have zoomed exponentially because of hype and renewable energy theme but I am very cautious in this segment. Another promising name in the segment is recently listed Inox India and you also have MTAR. Then you have Gravita India in the recycling segment. Eighth theme is healthcare. Again, due to lifestyle problems, healthcare would continue to grow. It includes three sectors, hospital, pharma and diagnostic chain. Hospital sector include Apollo Hospital, Max Healthcare, Fortis, Narayan Rudhyalaya and recently listed Yatharth Hospital. My preferred pick would be Narayan Rudhyalaya and Yatharth. Then pharma is huge sector with stocks like Cipla, Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy, Mankind Pharma, Divis Lab, Loras Lab, Newland Lab, Suvin Pharma and Kaplan Point. Then diagnostic chain include Dr. Lal Path Lab, then Metropolis and Thyrocare. Then I recently discussed a mid-cap company in senior care segment which is Max India. You can consider one or two stock from healthcare theme. Then ninth and final theme is travel and tourism. There's a huge trend for travel and tourism which is only going to increase. So currently hotel sector is an upcycle that would last for another 2-3 years where you have companies like Indian Hotel, Lemon Tree, Chalet Hotel, EIH and recently listed Sami Hotels. Then you have Interglobe Aviation and Aviation Sector. Then a few theme parks like Imagica and Wonderla Holidays. So in this video I have tried to share top stock ideas across 9 key themes where you can build your portfolio. Again you don't need to invest in all these themes. You can pick 4-5 key themes and invest in 5-6 companies from these themes across large, mid and small cap. But don't be in a hurry. Spend some time understanding the fundamentals and then slowly build the portfolio. Due to lack of time, I could not discuss these themes and stocks in detail but I have discussed majority of them in my previous video. You can have a look. Now I am sure I would have missed a few names but I think the names I have discussed are good enough to build a right portfolio. So tell me in the comments which are your most favorite themes and which stocks you've